there's a fine line between Ukrainian and Russian cuisine. We all have borscht, we all have dumplings, we all have salo, similar people, just different nationalities. But while this famous Ukrainian restaurant in New York is packed with customers... We've seen an outpouring of love and support. People have been lining up for hours, day and night. Most of the tables are empty at this Russian bar. In the beginning, it was very scary, getting death threats. Die, you B-I-T-C-H, you Nazi, you Putin lover, go back. As Russia keeps attacking Ukraine, another kind of battle is being waged in New York's restaurant scene. Just because you're hurting a Russian establishment doesn't mean you're hurting the regime in Russia. Circumstances beyond your control are affecting your livelihood. I'm pretty sure that the Russian people that work at Russian restaurants, they send money back home. That's putting money in the Russian economy. That means that support and war. I do not like that. That kind of anti-Russian sentiment changed everything for Vlada von Schatz. You know, we've been here for 36 years, working every day, three generations, and then all of a sudden, we're canceled. She runs Russian Samovar, a piano bar near Broadway that used to be crowded with customers. Now, Vlada is receiving death threats. I got them the first day. People were telling me to die and calling me a Nazi and a fascist, and they just took me by surprise because uh, having Jewish roots, being called a Nazi is never nice. Business was so bad that Vlada's family thought they would have to shut down forever. So she decided to go public with her family's stance on the war. This war is very personal because my husband is Ukrainian. My children identify as Russian, Ukrainian, Jewish, Americans. We have family in both Russia and we have family in Ukraine. So how do I feel about this war? I, I, I hate it. Vlada's son Misha feels the same way. This isn't our war. We didn't start this war. We're against this war. This is Putin's war. Because of myself out speaking against the war, I am now no longer welcome back into Russia, I was already told. Meanwhile, Veselka in Little Ukraine has seen 50% more customers than usual. Veselka is iconic for New York City and obviously uh, Little Kiev. You know, it's been around forever. Seeing them fuller than ever is very exciting. I don't see a ticket for the. Uno Jason Burchard says he's sympathetic to Russian businesses facing backlash for the war. It's just unfortunate that whether they have Russia in their name or they serve Russian food, they, I feel it's unjust that they're being targeted because of that. On the flip side, I'm grateful that people are being very supportive for, for me and the Ukrainian community here. But he's mostly concerned about his staff. The staff that are uh, Ukrainian or Eastern European descent, I think we all stand together. There have been constant questions about should I go back? How best ways to support? Lots of Ukrainians just feeling guilty by being here at the moment and not doing anything in particular. Vitaly Dasetnichenko supervises some of the staff at Veselka. It was my choice to work even more these days. It's nice to be busy. It kind of takes your mind away for a second, so you stop thinking about other things happening. He's been living in the U.S. for 10 years and at first considered going back home to fight in the war. My dad was not very happy to hear that he said, if I remain here, they have a chance in the future if they want to move down here. Do you guys care for dessert as well? Death threats slowed down at Russian Samovar once they spoke up about the backlash they faced. For every death threat, I got about 20 of people saying that they are not the people that are blaming us for the war. They came here to build a business, punishing those people for a place they moved out of that gave them so many hardships is a little bit stupid. It's like we're all interconnected. This war feels like brother against brother. Vlada's family even raised money for humanitarian efforts in Ukraine. In fact, the 36-year-old restaurant is famous for hosting dissidents and defectors from the Soviet Union. This was the, the rendezvous point. You would have Chechen hitmen at one table. You would have hockey players at another table. You would have ballerinas at another table. It was very much a very strange eclectic time, especially early days in the Russian community. We came here as refugees from the Soviet Union. I have no say in where you're gonna spend your money, where you're gonna do anything. All I can do is guarantee you a good time at the Russian Sound. So once they find out whose side of the war you're on, they will come back. 